Obviously, we have people that feel they need to hold signs or protest or do things like that. Uh, we have we have the same people doing it every week. And after the Kirkwood thing, I, I think that's how it kind of started there. Uh, we want to guard First Amendment rights. We want to do the right thing. But as a person that deals with security as a living, uh, what would be maybe some of your suggestions that you would have to help us deal with that? Now, before you get started, I have done some research on my own. And in a lot of the local governments across the country, when they do, in fact, allow this inside the chambers, it's confined to a certain area. And it is confined to where the sergeant at arms, which would be you in this case, could monitor constantly. And what, what, would you, what were your thoughts on that? Well, that's uh, really kind of the same thoughts that I had was, if you want to allow that type of activity during the meetings, is make sure that the hey, no. signs that the person wants to use uh, Obviously, to me, the, the best place would be in the back of the room where they're not blocking the vision of everyone else that's attending the meeting. Everyone has the, the constitutional right, like you said, of free speech, but it doesn't really allow them to interfere with the rights of the other people who meet, especially to seek to view and to hear and, and those type of things. So it really can't be disruptive. Uh, what happens is then when you get a disrupting meeting, uh, it creates problems for everyone, and then we usually have to escort someone out, and then that creates problems. Uh, so we tried to, I think that suggestion that you just had is having a designated area uh, for such activity uh, would be a very good, good start. Don't you think, Sheriff, and, I, and law enforcement's obviously your livelihood, don't you think, Sheriff, that after the Kirkwood thing and the things that happened in Chicago and other parts of the country, that we shouldn't take any of this light? Oh, no, uh, definitely not. And this started, as you remember, years ago in San Francisco. Uh, a city councilman there went in and shot the mayor, and, and uh, this has gone on for, for many years all over the United States, uh, which, of course, was the impetus to putting in metal detectors and x-ray machines and, and all that in our buildings. We do the best we can about scanning and keeping weapons out, but obviously anything can be used as a weapon. Uh, we watch some of these reality shows where they're showing fights in the courtroom. They use the microphones, chairs, uh, briefcases. Anything can be used as a weapon. So uh, obviously the first thing is, is try to control the meetings, set the rules that you want set, and then a, a good enforcement of it. Right, right, right. Okay. Anybody else have any questions of the sheriff? Anybody else have any questions of the sheriff? Mr. Chair. Go right ahead. Well, not specifically to you, Tom, but I wouldn't, if we had the if small signs in the back, I, I wouldn't object if the cameras you know, went on them for one minute. Or whatever length of time, so that sure. somebody a good idea. Never thought of that. Somebody wants to to see what was brought to the meeting that day. Right. That, that these cameras be put on them for a minute or so, yeah. so that um, no, no so that whatever somebody brought. Uh, and that's another another way to get the expression out there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And Mr. Chairman, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Scott. I mean, I, I, I don't want to, you know, infringe upon anybody's right to do it. But it seems to me that we're doing a lot of things right now just because of one disgruntled ex-employee, you know, that that wants to you know, bring different things up. You know, I mean, he's uh, gone out of his way, you know, as, as you know, uh, you know, taking pictures of legislators' cars or maybe even threatening voicemails, other things like that. It, it's just, it's it's wrong, and you know, you don't want to make a rule, you know, that inhibits everybody else. You know, from from their freedoms. So therefore, what we want to do is, you know, make it make it fair for all. You know, and you know, then we'll we'll go on with life. You know, because right now we're spending a lot of time, which is what they want. You know, to try to get you know publicity for whatever you know, mental thing that they want to do. I don't I don't know, but uh, you know, we seem to be spending a lot of time on something that uh, we shouldn't shouldn't worry about. Like right, so we can do the best we can for for scanning for weapons, but uh, there's no way to scan for the mental state of someone coming in, which is exactly what happened. Yep. Uh, those are very minor violations that he had been dealing with the city with. And uh, like I said, you just don't know someone's uh, mental state. Well, and isn't it, isn't it kind of, from what I read, I, I read some internet articles over the weekend. And from what, I, from what I read on the internet, it seems to be a trend that whoever does this type of activity does it not in a, in a vacuum. They, they show up at meetings every week. Every week, every week, and then at that specific meeting, when things go wrong, then it, then it goes really wrong. So it, it isn't, it isn't, and I agree with Danny. I, I think we have one particular individual that is protesting. There's a disgruntled ex-employee 
uh, and is, is causing a lot of aggravation to not only the people of Jackson County, but to this legislature uh, for whatever vendetta he has against the county. And I think that's exactly what happened in Kirkwood. I think that's exactly what happened in Kirkwood. I think you had a guy that held it personal against some council people there, county whatever, and I think that at the end it built up to a major pinnacle and he went off. And, I, I, and, and I'm so glad you answered the question that I, I don't want to think that we're overreacting here. I, I think that the, all these things should be taken seriously to that. Well, we have to prepare for any scenario. Uh, obviously, that's what we do. And uh, always expect the unexpected and all the right, other cliches right, that right. go with that. But uh, uh, you can only plan so much and uh, put in so many security systems. Right. But like I said, you just don't know when that person, that's the last straw they're going to snap. Th that's exactly right. And I think you got to be prepared for that. But, yes, go right ahead. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, we may be going down the wrong path. But certainly, everybody after the Turkwood incident shares concerns about events that happen. And uh, we do have a uh, house security, which I think is good. I know that you do your best. Uh, but on the signage, if we were unilaterally say all signage needs to be in a certain area, just looking at the room right now, there are problems. Here's an individual. Yeah, I can I can almost read. You're just holding something on your lap. doesn't have to sign that. Well, it, depending on how you define it. There's other individuals with name tags. And I personally have never found any individual holding something in their lap a problem. They could wear a t-shirt and have the same message. And are we going to outlaw a t-shirt? Greg, I would, we're not I would, saying we're going to outlaw anything. Greg, we're saying they can have the signs. We're saying that we want to be safe. Right. And I would rather, if the signs, that's why I'm trying to separate that from conduct, I'd rather we define conduct and say disruptive conduct is if you hold a sign above sh shoulder level, if you uh, speak loudly enough that it's audible and disrupts a meeting, something of that nature, which really goes to what we're talking about. But if we just say holding a sign on your lap, we're going to be in litigation. What is a sign? Okay, what if the person brings in pictures? Well, the, Greg, we're not left. saying we're not saying it's a channel sign. No, I'm saying if we try to designate it to a certain area of the world. We, we, have, a, we have our sheriff, who is a security expert, that is telling us that a designated area is easier for him to secure. Now, you're wanting to ignore all that and just say, okay, it's all okay, you can do whatever you want. You know, at, at some point, I mean, you, you ought to talk to the wives and family members and the people in Kirkwood. Nobody had any idea this was going to happen. Nobody. And it happened because they weren't prepared. You have the sheriff here saying, well, no, have I talked to you this weekend, Sheriff? No, we haven't talked to him. We haven't, I haven't talked to him at all. You have the guy that is the, the, the security expert that deals with this saying, it's okay, they can have the signs. But for him to monitor, it's got to be in a designated area. I don't think he's wrong. Well, and and I think I, we're wrong. I, I think we are not smart for not paying attention. I, I respectfully disagree because I think your concerns are based on perceived potential conduct and somebody who had no sign could be the same danger and we wouldn't have any protection. And I just think to jump uh, or uh, connect to the conclusion that because somebody carries signs they might be a potential danger, uh, I have trouble making that connection. And, and I, I am not, for myself, prepared to move to putting signs in a particular area. I am prepared for the legislature to take action defining disruptive conduct. Uh, but just the sign alone just doesn't kind of seem to me to be enough to have a, an area that we have to monitor. Not only do I agree with Craig, uh, but I also think, I mean, to me, the, the biggest issue is, the first, is you know, your, your freedom of speech rights and so forth under the First Amendment. And yes, you can put it to a certain area, but you're still confining the First Amendments to a certain area. I don't know legality-wise what, that, what we can do in that regard, and that would be my concern, is that this is a First Amendment right, and that needs to be addressed, and all of the legalities surrounding this issue need to be looked at in depth before we move forward. Mr. Chair. Go right Could we uh, ask the sheriff to research two or three, four other, yeah, that would be good, county legislatures, <coughs> city councils, and cities of our size, of our diversity, and get back to us maybe in three weeks? Yeah, actually downtown. Yeah, that's fine. Let's get, I mean, it, you could probably find out some of the information. Sure. In a week, and Henry, you dealt with the state legislature, and you said there were some rules there. In the, in the state good. legislature, they absolutely can find protesters to a specific, specific area. They absolutely can find the media to a specific area. So I think you're wrong in your perception. I think as a legislative body, we have the right 
to confine them to a specific area for monitoring. And especially in lieu of what's happened in other local governments. 